how to use a jackhammer chatterbait for striped bass. Oh Lord! Holy! So what do you want to do first? All right, guys. First things up, you want to cast to your wherever you're casting. Obviously, you're gonna let it drop. Let it hit the ground. You don't have to let it hit the ground. You can go as low as you want. So you're letting it drop. Good. All right. You want to give it a couple jigs off the ground. Why you're doing that is because you're going to be attracting their attention when you jig. Not only that, but that's another option when they can hit on the jig. Next, you want to swim it, let it drop. Swim it, let it drop. Swim it, let it drop. Once you're close to the bank, you can just swim it all the way. Now those are two more options when they could hit. So all in total, you got four options. You got one on the drop. Option number two on the jig. Got him. Option number three on the swim. Got him. Now you want to swim it and let it drop, make it look injured. Make it look like an injured fish. And option number four would be when you're close to the bank, the striper's saying, oh shoot, he's getting close to the bank. So he's gonna go for the attack, he's gonna go for the kill. Ooh. Every option, guys, and every one of those options. So you got, you got option number one, the drop. They do hit on the drop sometimes. Got option number two, the jig. Now you can jig as much as you want, because it's not really a count. Option number three, the swim, the injured fish swim. Look at that. I'm just reeling him in when he's dropping. Look at that. Letting him, letting him drop and swim. I'm closer to the bank already, he's closer to me, so I'm just gonna swim him. Now that might be another reaction to, oh shoot, I need to attack, you know what I mean? And that's basically it, guys. That's the technique for the jackhammer chatterbait. Three quarter chatterbait, just because it sinks faster, you know, and it has some, you could feel it more when it's dropping, so. So crazy story guys, see this spot right here? All that stuff, all that crap. So there used to be an RV here and um, some guy used to, he, some, this is guy, you know, he was just with his dog. He was parked with his RV and all that. And uh, I asked him like, bro, what are you doing? They let you park your RV here? So he said he was doing uh, parole. They let him do parole by the aqueduct. This guy had cancer and he was about to die soon. So they let him do parole. And you know, last I talked to him, he had, he was telling me how he had cancer. He was about to die soon. And you know, I'm guessing he died because he left all his stuff here. You know, this guy was freaky looking to be honest. He was, he was a scary looking guy. You know, he looked kind of off, but Nobody would really talk to him. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna talk to this guy, see what's up. And sure enough, he said he was on parole and you know, he was just trying to serve his time. But this dude used to literally wake up every morning or every night and just fish for catfish. The aqueduct is right here, guys. He used to just fish for catfish and that's what he was eating the whole time. So, you know, pretty interesting story. I don't really know what happened to this guy, but let's see. He used to have a motorcycle. I'm pretty sure it's from his four-wheeler. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, 
I'm not cool with all the trash. I don't even know if that's all his, to be honest. A lot of people just are morons and throw trash everywhere. Yep. Well, this is where he was parked. To be honest, all this, it looks burnt, dude. I'm debating if his trailer got burnt or something. But, but yeah, guys. Interesting story, to be honest. Thank you.